What's good? Back in this bitch. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. I've been busy. I'm bear with me. Anyways, today I'm gonna be watching you versus Michael Myers. Could you defeat him? I think I could, honestly, for being honest. And then it's the infographics, I think. Yeah, sure. Um, anyways, let's get it started. Um I'm for sure, for sure, for sure, I can beat him. Everyone loves Halloween. It's that time of year where people get to dress up in spooky costumes, eat a bunch of candy, and be brutally murdered by a superhuman psychopathic killer. For 30 years, Michael Myers has stalked our nightmares, and Halloween is his time to shine. Incessantly driven on a quest to murder his family members, Michael keeps coming back time and time again looking to finish his evil quest. How well do you know- Wait, when was this video update uploaded? Because- Come on, man. It's not even his family member no more. Huh? Whatever. Your family's background. Could you be related to Michael Myers? If so, what would you do if he came after you? Hello and welcome to another special episode of the Infographics Show. If we're talking um, 2007 remake, I don't think he was going to do anything to Lori. So I just tell him he's my cousin, man. Come on. Today we're pitting you brother, up against whatever. the classic <laughs> Halloween slasher, Michael Myers. Born on October 19th, 1957, Mike. I thought it was 68. What are you getting your facts from? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, no, no, no. 68 is when, when he killed, right? Uh, when was Michael, Michael Myers born? What? Cool. Michael Myers was only six years old when he brutally murdered his teenage sister, Judith, complaining of bizarre, inexplicable nightmares and a voice in his head that told him to do bad things. Michael's dreams were filled with flashbacks to events that happened centuries ago in medieval Europe. Michael okay. dreamed of a 15-year-old boy named Enda. Deformed by a midwife's botched delivery and shunned by his community, Enda had nevertheless fallen in love with a Celtic princess named Deidre. When her father called for suitors, Enda approached the king and asked for her hand in marriage, only to be rejected and laughed at by all present, to include his own father. Confident he could make Deidre love him if he could simply get to her, Enda secretly followed her to a river one day. Approaching her, Deidre mistook his intentions and became frightened, nearly falling into the river. When Enda tried to rescue her, Deidre believed he was trying to rape her and fled. Heartbroken by the accusation and humiliation, Enda was driven to madness, and later, on the Celtic holiday of Samhain, he viciously attacked Deidre and Kulian both, killing the couple. The village turned on Enda and brutally murdered him in return, with the king having his shaman curse Enda's soul to forever wander the earth until the end of time, repeating his crime. Possessed by Enda's spirit, a six-year-old Michael killed his older sister Judith on Halloween night, and then sat outside on the front yard and who the fuck is this is this what they show in the in Halloween what five or six because I don't remember knowing all this like this whole fucking story I just know there's a cult with the thorn and shit but it's not this is it Right, whatever. He waited for the police to arrest him. He was sent to Smith's Grove Sanitarium Let's and became go. the patient of psychiatrist Dr. Sam Loomis, who spent 15 Fuck years with young Michael. Per Dr. Loomis, he spent eight years trying to reach the pint-sized murderer, and then seven after that, trying to keep him locked up forever. Because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. On October 30th, 1978, Michael broke out of his room in Smith's Grove Sanitarium, but not before carving the word sister on his door. What followed was a long journey trying to track down his surviving younger sister so he could murder the fucking mask, bro. That's fine. <laughs> her, all the while hounded by Dr. Loomis, who would do his best to recapture the renegade psychopath. So let's say that you're checking your family tree, and one day you suddenly feel a cold chill as you realize you're second cousins with someone in the infamous Myers family tree. And to make matters worse, you look up and realize that the date on the calendar is October 30th, just one day until Halloween. What would you do? How could you survive an encounter with Michael Myers? 
First, you have to know what you're up against. Afflicted by the curse of Thorn, Myers is for all intents and purposes simply unkillable. Thanos can't even kill him? <laughs> what the fuck? It was said that Curse of Thorn, Myers is for all intents and purposes. Okay, I wonder if they're going to bring that in uh, in this new Halloween movie. Halloween Ends, I think is what it's going to be called. Because they, they have to explain on why the fuck he's so fucking... Why he can't fucking die, you know? This is simply unkillable. It was said that hell wouldn't accept him, and so Myers is denied an afterlife either in the pearly gates or in the depths of fiery hell, which unluckily for us means he's stuck to wander the earth forever. Not only is Michael immortal though, he is superhumanly strong, able to lift full grown men into the air with just one arm, or jam his thumbs through somebody's skull. Along with his super strength is his super endurance, as Myers seems to never physically tire, and he's all but involved vulnerable to life-threatening injuries to include being shot in the head. He may have a healing factor that allows him to regenerate vital organs, or perhaps he's simply zombified and lives purely as a corpse animated by evil alone. Either way, he's one tough cookie. And if all that wasn't enough, really Myers also cookie. has the extraordinary ability to sneak better than the most accomplished international jewel thief, making it impossible to sneak up. That's crazy because he's fucking huge and shit, but... Somehow he gets away from everyone. Uh, hey, who the fuck cares? On him, and likely making you the one who will be getting snuck up on. So, as you may have learned from some of our previous videos, picking your battlefield is often the key difference between life and death. When faced with a superhuman monster such as Michael, you're gonna want every advantage you can get while denying him the same. This means you're gonna want to fight somewhere where Michael can't effectively sneak up on you. So, boarded up, abandoned houses in the middle of the night or old lumber mills are out of the question. Instead, we recommend a Nice big empty stadium. The large open field will give Michael no cover to hide behind. Oh yeah, dude. Let me go fucking rent the fucking earthquake stadium out here or some shit. I'll fight him right there. Behind. And the powerful lights will make it impossible for Michael to have a single shadow to sneak behind. But given his intelligence, it's likely he'll figure out a way to shut the lights off on you, which is bad news. So instead, wage your battle to the death at daytime so lighting is not an issue. No cover to hide behind and no shadows to skulk through. <laughs> now you're turning the odds against him, but you're gonna still have to find a way to take down 200 pounds of murder that can't die. If you're a fan of our other videos, then you know that here at the Infographic Show, we're big believers in problem solving through superior firepower. And it doesn't get much more superior than the US military's M240 Bravo machine gun. A general purpose machine gun, the M240 is an equal opportunity ass kicking machine, easily taking on enemy personnel and lightly armored vehicles, firing a 7.62 millimeter round at a rate of 950 rounds per minute. The M240 can reach out and hurt someone almost 4,000 meters away. That's a lot of ouch being delivered at over 2,800 feet per second giving each 7.62 mm round incredible kinetic energy. But unfortunately for us, Michael seems generally unfazed by ballistics. So this time, we're going to have to change our usual tactic. The mask? Come on, the mask has to take him out. There's no way. Dick of shoot it a bunch with big guns until it dies. With science. You're not going to win this fight with brawn, so let's win it with brains. What you want to do is have built a secret pit with a trap door in advance in the middle of your battlefield. Now, for a mass murdering, literally evil incarnate, immortal psychopath, Michael is pretty clever and similar tactics have been tried before. However, if there's one thing that Michael absolutely hates, it's the same thing as every 80s horror villain in history, promiscuity. And if there's another thing Michael has a blind, all-consuming rage for, it's his sister. We're not going to spell it out for you, and we'd rather leave the details out, but you're basically going to have to make a very powerful lure for Michael. And seeing as both of his sisters are long dead, well, you're going to have to get very creative. At least maybe now you can find a use for that blow-up doll you bought as a, quote, joke, what? unquote, <laughs> and then stashed away in shame. Anyways, yes, whatever your clever ploy is, and we cannot stress enough that we really don't want to know the details, it should be enough to lure Michael in a blind rage toward you. With a head full of murder, Michael should fall easy prey for your secret trap door and fall into the prepared pit that you have waiting for him. But what do you fill the pit with that can be lethal to something that can't die? Venomous snakes? Spikes? Flamethrowers? Venomous snakes carrying spikes that are on fire? This is where science comes to the rescue. Fluoroantimonic acid is There's one of the most no powerful way. acids known to man. 
With a pH of negative 31.3, it's 100,000 billion 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 times more potent than stomach acid. And no, we did not make up that number. It's so powerful that it can only be stored in specialized containers, because not only would it eat through a glass bottle, it would continue eating through the table that it rests on. We think you know where this is going. Michael may be able to handle being set on fire, stabbed in the heart, and shot in the brain, but we'd like to see what kind of evil can withstand its molecular bonds being ripped apart by fluoral antimonic acid. In the world of evil <laughs> spirits, it turns out that the ultimate exorcist may just be chemistry. How would you take on Michael Myers? Is chemistry truly our greatest tool against evil? Also, be sure. That's crazy. I don't think that's enough to kill him. But who knows? You know, I, you know what I think would kill him if he cut him up into pieces. You gotta throw them in one of those tree, um, you know, the tree things. I don't, I don't know what they're called, but like it's, it, you know, you know what I'm saying. Or you can just like get a chainsaw and cut off his arms and shit, his legs, everything. And uh, I think that about does it. His head. You gotta take his head off first. Actually, no. Do hands first, cause if you take off his head, he's still gonna go. Oof. You know, so he's gonna fuck you up. Um, well, thank you for watching that. I don't think we could defeat him, even if we tried. Um, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna check all these out in the next few days, weeks, maybe. Who the fuck knows? Anyways, thank you for watching this. Later.